Hi everyone, like welcome to Splunk demo session one. So like uh, to give you a brief about the course, like what is being taught, right? So it consists of around like two modules, basically like Splunk admin as well as the power user. Okay, so like power user in the sense uh, we, you will be taught around for the Splunk development. Okay, so like uh, yeah, first we'll it consists of two courses basically admin and power user the duration would be like around one month 30 days is the duration okay and uh, like uh, here right i'm not sure like everyone knows about the splunk infrastructure and all so because it's actually it, it has multiple components okay so we'll be dealing about like what is machine data and its challenges and uh, splunk need and its features and you will be like having the installation of the Splunk. Okay, you will get to know the installation of the Splunk. And there will be like multiple components basically. Splunk has like search head, indexer, and all those. So you will be having uh, the you will be get to know you will have a hands on our labs for this one. And we will be discussing on the license. Okay, and there will be something like uh, setting up the nodes like search heads. Okay, Splunk enterprise environment and setting up the universal forwarder heavy forwarder and roles and responsibilities data aging and the configuration files right? this this is basically like fully like an admin okay so from here right when you talk about like from here right the development will start okay so the splunk will have something like fields tables we'll discuss about that commands okay the, uh, for now right it is too technical you can refer this uh, uh, page for the course syllabus i don't want to spend much on this course syllabus so basically like i want to convey like we will be doing like two stuff one is uh, splunk admin as well as the splunk development this is the first thing which i want to mention i have put that course syllabus in the chat window you can refer that first not sure like many people know what is splunk so first we will discuss about like splunk Take a so, yeah. so like each and every organization, right? It will have like so many servers, right? It can be something like DB servers or an application servers, or it can be Windows servers, Active Directories, Mail servers, DNS servers, and and lot more. Okay, and each then each system, like if it is a mail server, right? It's generate some type of data. If it is a DB server, it generates some type of data. So basically, right, when if you want to maintain this data, okay, whatever the data that comes, right, it is called as machine data. Okay. So if I go to this slide, yeah. So as I told right earlier like Splunk will be having uh, like organization will be having like so much data okay so how it will happen right yeah so in organization right you will have some multiple operating systems or multiple application servers or something okay you can assume like there's too many servers and each server will generate some data basically the data can be like two things no the data can be something like logs it can be the logs okay or it can be something like other metrics okay like cpu memory and all those so an admin is there okay and if you want if he wants to maintain one server right he can maintain in this architecture okay if there are 10 systems he may maintain but let us assume like an organization is having some thousand servers and there are 10 admins are they able to maintain or in other use cases something like now you have one solution you are developing one solution as part of customer need you are developing some solution okay which has some db server the db server is present in the on premises and what they told like it is a retail uh, it is a retail website like its presence is across globe means it should be hosted on cloud 
correct right so they will have like amazon.com which is presents is across multiple countries here also my solution would be in cloud okay let us assume like in some country there is no aws then they have to go for azure okay in some uh, in some countries no there is something like google cloud is cheaper than azure and uh, aws then there i have to put my solution here okay means my solution is decoupled across multiple countries but it has to get this data like user credit card information and all those has to come to on premises and get that validated correct so if one of the transaction fails in this case right it is complicated for people to debug the issue or it can be a development team or a testing team or administration team right it will be very difficult for them so that's why splunkin will come into picture basically so you know right what why logs are useful you know what are logs right so whenever you do an operation when, when an application right? let us assume like there is an application over here if you do any transaction no there is an application server okay whenever you click a website right internally some method like get to post or something will be called right so this will be recorded in the log so those are called as the logs okay so like who uses splunk basically splunk will be used by many people but why they use the splunk why they use the splunk is the splunk is a software used for collecting searching analyzing and monitoring the logs means In the same example which I showed, here I'm having some thousand systems. Okay, and log will roll over every log won't be present in the server more than like one day maximum. Okay, if you keep the retention period of one day. Else, if it is five MB or six MB, you know, it will be rolled out within five, ten minutes. Right now, all these systems generate logs. Okay, this is this may be unstructured data or the machine data. Now, what what why Splunk will come into picture, right? It will get the data from the source machines and it will be storing it in the indexer. Splunk will be having one component called as indexer, okay? So there is one component called as indexer in Splunk where it will get the data from multiple systems, either uh, uh, for assume, like let us assume, like this is a Linux operating system, this is a Windows operating system okay this is something like a solaris solaris and this may be something like a, a network cisco router or this can be an iot device okay and splunk gets the data from these source systems and it will store once the data is stored right what they will do the splunk developer or a machine learning guy or a big data guy so they will write some queries to manipulate or extrapolate some useful information out of it so here the data will be stored in something like indexer okay once the data is coming here now let us assume like uh, when you are doing a purchase operation in amazon.com you will do two things one is you will read the reviews or you will do something like see the description or the product details and you will do the purchase okay now multiple millions and millions of customers will be visiting the site as a customer or as a ceo of a company what i should do i should know how many people are visiting i want one metrics because my infrastructure is like costing a lot and my presence is there in multiple companies countries but in every country he wants to know people visit or search description or view the item and purchase if they purchase what are the products okay what is the category of products okay he wants to 
as a CEO, right? I want these three information. Okay, from where I can get whenever a transaction is being done in UI, that will be recorded in the log and it is stored in the Splunk in an indexer component. So I will write some query by like within one month or last two months or three months or four months, I will try to get the data of how many people are visiting and how many are purchasing. So let us assume like there is something like 100 people. Okay, for simple count, out of 100 people, I my metric is something like I'm get I'm I got something like 10 people are doing a purchase and nine people out of them are buying only mobiles. And one is buying something like electronics. Okay, then as a CEO, right, what I will do, I will invest my amount. This is the trend of that particular country. They are inter that country people are interested in these mobiles, right? The trend varies from country to country. So they will invest on these sectors rather than investing on the other stuff, right? Like there will be something like clothing and all those. But as a CEO, now I have to invest my amount properly. So Splunk will facilitate that. Even if you like Splunk is being used in the uh, big data and machine learning also. In machine learning, what they will do? They will analyze the system, but the data where they will get, they will get it from the multiple source systems. Even in big data, big data is something like you will extrapolate some useful information from an unstructured data, right? Do you think like the data that is coming from a machine is a structured data? Like SQL or something? No, it is not the case, no? The data that is generated by a machine won't be any structured, right? If you take one machine will generate some data, like a router will generate one kind of data and Linux operating system will generate some data of data. As a whole, do you think like is it a structured data? No. So there are two jobs. One is the people who maintain the Splunk, right? Who, who will be bringing the data from multiple sources into the Splunk, that job will be done by the admin. Okay, the admin will take care of getting the data from different source systems to the Splunk. That is first thing. Second thing is like there will be Splunk developer, once the data is reaching the Splunk, on the data that is stored, you will try to analyze and extrapolate the scenarios or the use cases and give some suggestions based on the requirement. This is one requirement. As a CEO, I am given this requirement to my developer so that it will give me some uh, like a right choice for the investment. You, let us assume like I'm a seller there. Okay, you are a seller. Let us assume like someone is a seller. So you will be interested in investing in this one, right? Not from the other things. Because in this country, people are interested in mobiles and electronics. So you won't worry buy something like a fashion or something. No, you won't invest in there. So that's that's how the Splunk helps. Okay. Now you understood, right? Splunk is a software which is used for collecting means from source systems it will get the data and searching means when the data is stored you know what will happen once the data gets stored it will be used for searching and you will we'll analyze the data and we can create a beautiful graphs. Okay, you can do alerts and all the so many stuff can be done using the Splunk basically. Okay. And what Splunk monitors basically I'll show one slide. So what Splunk monitors basically it can monitor the data from servers, Active Directory, Windows, radio frequency devices, sensors, VMware machines, app servers, security devices, 
and databases, web servers, networks, exchange servers, and mainframes and applications. Let us assume like there is something like a security device. One machine is one machine is there, okay, and try hacker is trying to access it. Okay, so normally, right, per day I will have the long logins, like 100 in my organization. Okay, I am having some 100 logins per 100 logins which are unsuccessful login attempts which are failed per day. Let us assume a case whenever a hacker tries to attack a system, enter into the network, no, he will use one system, he will gain access to one system, and what he will do, he will to get he will get the access for that right, he will target one system and do multiple attempts. If I see some trend like within one hour, I'm seeing 100 login failures. If you have Splunk, no, you can create a dashboard and you can directly, I mean, like when, whenever you saw the alert or when you saw this unsuccessful, someone is trying to attack their system, right? You can directly find which is the IP and you can isolate it from the network. So Splunk has those uses. So now it has some certifications. This one we will see in the next classes. So for, for now, right, we'll see like uh, there are like multiple software licenses. So enterprise uh, Linux edition, right? Enterprise Linux edition, which will have 60 days trial license. Okay. And you will be having some SaaS application cloud license, which is for 15 days. And there will be some developer and dev test license. Okay. So this one we'll discuss in the future classes. For now, right, we'll discuss only on the enterprise Linux. So what we will do, right? We'll install one cloud instance in the Google Cloud. So I am having one Google Cloud. Okay. So just you give this, you type this command. Okay. This, you type this URL. Cloud.google.com. Okay. Then uh, you have to do some uh, like credit card uh, registration, or you have to add an account. So you can do the lab either in AWS or you can do the lab in a, a uh, Google Cloud platform or if you have a, any virtual box or VMware, right? You can do there also. Okay. For demo purpose, right? What we will do, right? We will install the Splunk in the cloud. So this is the URL which you have to give. I will copy paste this in my chart box. Okay. So if you want to create an instance in cloud, right? This is the left side. We'll have the navigation menu. So why we need these main instance? Why you have to build the setup in cloud means in admin course, you will come to know like Splunk has multiple components basically. So it will have if you create one infrastructure, right? Complete a Splunk infra infrastructure, one lab. It will have some eight to nine machines. So we should have some eight to nine machines to build a Splunk setup proper Splunk split setup. So that's why we will go with cloud because we can't install if for development practices you can install in your local. But if you want to go through admin, right? You should have a good machine or you should have a cloud account. Because it will have some seven to eight machines. Okay. For now, right? If I want to create a VM, no, I have to click on the navigation menu and I have to go to compute engine here. There is something like computing jet and there will be something like VM instances. So I have to click on this VM instance. So here, right, I have to create one VM. So what I have to do, right, I have to click on the create. Now this component, I will call it as an indexer. Okay, this is my component which is called as an indexer. Okay, there are multiple components, but uh, yeah, like after one week you will have this uh, admin. Initially, right, for now development will start. First we will start with the development and then we will go with the admin. So for now, right, we just need one machine for practicing. Okay, if you are going through admin, right, you need multiple machines. 
So here I have given my component called as uh, instance name as indexer. Okay, here right I have to select some region and zone. Okay, this you no need to change anything. Just here right we have to select the required hardware configuration. I am selecting like two VCP and four GB RAM. By default I won't change anything, and there will be only two changes. One is like I have to select the operating system which I need. So I will be selecting the Red Hat or CentOS. Okay. I am selecting the CentOS and by default you will be getting some 20 GB that I am not going to change. And here right here I am allowing the HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Okay. And click on create an instance. So the processor is something like this. For installing a line uh, Splunk. First is. Create a. Linux VM. Okay, you can create it anywhere. You can create in AWS, Google Cloud, or in your local. Okay. Second is download Splunk. Why? We have to use, we have to download the Splunk using the wget command. Basically, it will be a tar file. Okay. So, normally we will be doing the tar installation. And third is what we will do, right? We have to extract the file. Fourth is start the Splunk. So if you want to install a Splunk indexer, a single instance is very simple. Just to download and extract the file. If it, if you want to install in Windows, no, just exe file. It's an exe file. Next, next, next would help. Okay. These are the four steps that needs to be followed. Meanwhile, I think my Linux system is up. And if I want to log in into this machine, no, I need to log in via some SSH. No, so this is the internal IP, this is the external IP. Okay, it is the public IP, this is the private IP. I can click on SSH. If I click on SSH, right, I will be able to log in. A new browser will open in that I can run some commands. Till now, any doubts? If you have any doubts on Splunk, or you can ask. You can type in the chart window or you can unmute yourself and you can ask. Mostly right, the people who attended the Splunk, right? There won't be any freshers. That's why I'm not taking much time on this explaining like Splunk, what is it and all those. Mostly 99% right, the people who attend are like minimum five years experienced. If someone is any fresher is there in the class. Because that's not that's unknown to freshers only experienced people admins or support team or dev team or testing team will attend. Okay. So, sudo hyphen i. If I give like sudo hyphen i, right, I will be getting now I am in the normal. It sees not the root user. He won't have much permissions. Okay, this is the default user of the uh, Google Cloud. Okay, now I am as an root. Hash prompt means root. root. So, I have to update the packages. M update hyphen y. If I give no, 
then whatever the image that has it has created no it may be created like one month back or two months back okay so it won't have the latest packages or latest ver versions if it is created like three days or four days back or one week back right you won't have much but if the image whatever you are running right the linux if it is created some it's old you know then if you run this command right all the packages will be updated so there are some 10 packages okay it is up updating some grub and yeah and google google os config agent something is being updated So meanwhile, right, what we will do, right? We have to go to official site of Splunk in Google. We have to give Splunk download. Basically, Splunk will have two types of softwares. As I mentioned earlier. Basically, Splunk ships the data from the servers. Okay. This is my operating system and this is my Splunk. So, in order to send the data from here to here, right, it can't be done on the fly, right? I need to have an agent. The agent is called as Universal Forwarder. Okay. Basically, the job of the universal forwarder is based on the configuration which I define here, it will send the data to the Splunk indexer. Okay, so there will be two types of softwares one is Splunk Enterprise Edition, and one is the universal forwarder. Basically, this universal forwarder will be sending the logs. Okay. So there uh, we will see this one. Okay. Splunk download. Oops. Okay. It is asking me to validate my email address. Okay. Just give me a second. So it is. I have to click on this Splunk Enterprise. Okay. So I have to click on the free trial. Okay. So basically, this is a server side configuration. So there are two types of softwares one is server side software, one is client side software. You remember like this. Okay. This is the server side, this is the client side. So in server side, right, it supports three operating systems it will support windows like windows 10 windows 16 and 2019 server editions it supports linux in the linux right it supports debian as well as the red hat rpm and tar based installation this will be for everything if you install this one right it will work on every irrespective of the platform of linux right it will work everywhere either it can be ubuntu or it can be centos or it can be red hat or it can be fedora this will work 
okay and it will support mac also but 99 percent of the server side of the splunk will be present only in the linux there is a rare scenario where you will have splunk installed on the windows server edition okay now we will see the client side Uh, still in no this is the client side this is the server side which supports three operating systems and this is a this is the server side this is the client side in client side right we can send the logs from windows systems or linux systems solaris systems mac and ibm axs systems okay so additionally we are getting solaris and aix being added okay but if you see this one right it is supporting some 32 bit and 64 when you go to linux right there are like so many based on the kernel and the distribution and the architecture type right it is supporting many even in the solaris it supports solaris 11 it supports physical hardware as well as the solaris uh, like vm both are supported and this is like already known mac not sure like how many people will use mac for server okay and this is for the ax systems so currently what we are doing right we are trying to install the linux by using this star based installation for this I, this is the server side i'm clicking on download now for as right the package won't be downloaded as such so here you will be having like command line by using the wget command i can download this into my operating system directly i don't need to copy to my desktop then transfer it to google that is all not needed okay so that's why i have mentioned like download the splunk via wget okay so there is a command that is given whenever you click this right you will get this command line option w get okay now what i can do right by default w get won't work okay you will get command not found are you able to see my screen i believe is it I think can I maximize it? Text size. Okay. So I will give W get. It will fail. So I have to give something like m instant w get now it will install the package w get software now i have to paste the command that i have downloaded from my splunk website okay but if you want to download the splunk you should register to the splunk okay first you have to create a username and password first then only you will be able to log in okay that is the prerequisite else you can't download like account creation is pretty straightforward you just give username password likewise you do for other sites no i don't think it is required to explain like how to create an account okay now i have to copy it and then paste Okay, now, okay. Now the Splunk software is downloaded. Currently, I am in the root directory, but I don't want my Splunk to be installed in my root. Normally, the default location of the Splunk is CT slash opt
in this folder only we will install the splunk so now what i have to do i have copied my file here then i have to give move to slash opt so it is not there cd slash op if i give ls or ll right it will display now two steps i have done one is i have created a linux vm and i have downloaded the splunk now extract and start two steps are remaining so r i fin zxvf I have to give this file name then it will extract the file okay once this is extracted right the splunk installation is all done just you have to start the service it is very simple single instance will be very simple but when you go to the like really complicated setup right if you have multiple nodes then it will be complicated normally for development right this should be sufficient one node is useful you can install in your lab so it will create a directory called splunk okay third step also done fourth is i have to start the service cd slash optc slash splunk i have to go here i have to here i will be having multiple scripts okay cd bin okay in bin i will be having multiple scripts this is the script which i will use for starting the service dot slash splunk start hyphen hyphen except hyphen so if i issue this command right then the splunk will start but the splunk will have one ui no for that ui you need to log in via some credentials so you will be prompted with that you have to enter the username and password for the web console which you want to log in so i am giving some username like admin and i am giving some password so my splunk is starting okay it is giving some port number okay and the host name okay but this is not my dns name no this is just the host name okay so what i have to do right i have to take the public ip public ip of this machine is this one here i have to add one second i have to copy the billing yeah it is copied now colon 8123 8000 is the web port okay if i give 8000 then my splunk ui will be displayed so here i have to enter the username and password which i just entered below right for creating the username i give some username and password here right for installation this one i have to enter here this is basically the splunk ui okay so today right we will pass here and i will type the question and answers tomorrow right i will explain you like uh, how to get the data and all those okay tomorrow i will be exp explain the capabilities of the splunk from the ui i will take the questions
justice. You know, if you have any doubts or if you have any questions, let you can ask. You can either unmute yourselves. You can unmute yourself and ask questions. So first right, we will be starting the development. Later we will be starting the uh, this one, like admin for this batch. So so like this one, uh, the team will get back to you. Coordinator will get back to you. They will call you regarding the fee. It will be 6K. Like, uh, it will be an interactive session. You can ask questions, right? You can unmute. Yeah. If you're yeah. In, Hi, Vikram. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Without universal forward, how can you get the data from Splunk, Splunk server? For lab purposes, we can we can we have some other options. We can directly add the data from Splunk UI itself. You will have some okay. options like add add data. You can add for lab development practices, right? We can use this option. Mm -hmm. Add data, and we can add it from here. That we will okay. see tomorrow. So okay. if you want to, this is for our lab purposes. Means like if you want to, if you are, there are two roles. You no, know, I told you no. Know, if you are more interested on development, right? You don't need to spin all the infrastructure and do the development. Okay, just you have one instance and you load that file, whatever the log file you want, and you can practice. If the license is expired, what? That is like it will be valid for 60 days. Okay. If the license is expired, you know what you can okay. do, right? To stop the okay. Splunk. Okay. okay. Delete the folder and reinstall. That's it. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Then you will get another 60 days. Okay. Okay. If you install the Splunk, means the time you Enter like accept a license. No, here, mm -hmm. here you are entering so accept a license there, right? From there, it will yeah. be 60 days. Okay, okay. So, if it expires, you can download the free version only, right? I mean, like if you know by the time if it releases, a, they release Plunk releases a new version, you can download that one and you can use. Okay, okay. Otherwise, you can use the Docker, right? Is it simple yeah, to destroy the containers? Yes, you can use the Docker. Okay. Even in Docker, also, after 60 days, the license will be same, no? Ah, yeah, yeah. It's easily destroyable. That is the ah. reason I am asking. Yeah. It here also it is direct only, you know. Like there, you have to install. It is something like just three or four comments are there here directly like that depends upon the user if you aren't really interested in docker you can do else right for a layman who is doesn't know docker okay then he can come to this folder cd slash opt okay cd splunk slash bin okay just to stop And delete this directory. Anything okay. can be done. Okay. Step on the use case yeah. or like a person who is interested. Yeah, okay. First, if you are going for administration, right? First you practice on this one, then you can go on go for the Docker stuff. Initially, 
it will be complicated if you start with the docker for administration for development right fine okay okay yeah i'm more i'm more into the development point okay then yeah that, that that's what like the Splunk will be used by everyone like you know irrespective of their uh, what to say like role developer okay. tester or support guy right it will be used by everyone if you know docker yeah you can do that yeah. any you. other question yeah. that's it my side So like uh, my classes would be like 90%, 95% practical only. So there won't be any theory stuff and all those. If you, you, you and you might have seen, right? I just give five minutes or six minutes for the walkthrough and I have given the demo, right? For installation on those, it will be like that only. Purna, do you have any other questions? Do you have any questions? You can type in chat. Okay, then fine. Okay, if you're fine, then we can wind up the session if you don't have any questions. Tomorrow, right? Uh, at the same time, we'll have the demo to proceed by the, uh, I mean, like development. Currently, right, one batch is going for them. The development uh, needs to be started okay so it doesn't there are two splits actually here either you can learn a development first or you can learn a development at first okay so you don't think like uh, in order to learn development i need to know admin not the case at all okay they are uh, like current team right still we are they didn't enter any query still we are managing the network we are creating the instances and we'll, we are doing this stuff okay okay guys if you don't have any question we can wind up